Howdy, Immortalium here. Today I'm starting the 24 hour manga marathon. Uh, basically, just before I actually start, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick run through of um, everything that I've set up to make it a more pleasant experience. Basically, we have um, my uh, leg rest where I'm going to rest my legs. There's the seat I'll be using, which I always use for my reading manga. Um, I also, in general, I listen to music as I um, read my manga, just in case there's noises outside that might take me out of the um, world. And I have a heater here. Usually I don't have a heater up in my room to keep me warm, but uh, my room isn't the best insulating considering the amount of time I'll be spending in here. I thought it would be more logical, you know, just to keep this room nice and warm. So anyway, I'll be starting the 24-hour manga marathon now. Uh, I'll be keeping track of the time. So, basically, in order to do that, I'm going to use my watch. Uh, basically, I set up a stopwatch. Um, you might have seen that if um, you've watched my 24-hour um, movie marathon videos. Um, the way the stopwatch works on my watch, though, is that once it hits 24 hours it'll reset back to zero so basically I just have to remember to show you the um, progress of it after each you know if thing has been completed um, also I just want to point out um, it doesn't matter if in my in my opinion if I um, get it in the 24 hours I'm gonna do this full 24 hours but it, it 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 basically even if it goes over the 24 hours i am at the very least going to get all seven criteria read um so that is my opinion even if it takes me like 40 hours or something i'm still going to get all seven criteria read so anyway i'll be starting the uh, stopwatch as soon as i um, begin reading my uh, manga so the very first up, I'm actually going to do the one that I have no interest in reading, and this um, is, I borrowed manga from a friend. She's also borrowing manga from uh, me, uh, for her manga she has no interest in reading. Uh, basically any manga I have, I have an interest in reading, and it was the same for her, that any manga she had, she had an interest in reading, so we just lent each other manga. So the manga I'll be reading is the first three volumes of Fake. Now, as far as I'm aware with Fake, it's a um, Shonen Ai kind of series, which turns Yaoi in like volume 7. This is a 7 volume series, but she only had the first 3 volumes. So I'm going to read the first 3 volumes and um, see what I think of it. She described the show, I think it's like a, a buddy cop thing, which, you know, I'm never keen on the buddy cop stuff. Uh, it could be good, I don't know. I'll give it a go. This is not going to cover the um, Yaoi Shonen Ai category, just simply the manga that I have no interest in reading. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start that now. Um, I'll report back to you once I have read it and I'll tell you what I think of it. So I'm back again. Um, just uh, finished reading all three volumes of Fake. So what is my opinion on it? It was okay. Um, basically, it was basically the buddy cop thing. Um, there was Basically, each chapter, or each act, as it was called, was like a separate case. Um, in each book, basically, there would be three acts, where the first two would be dealing with the two cops, um, one called Rio and the other called D. And then there'd be, like, another chapter dealing with um, these two kids um, that they hang out with. Um, just give me a sec to think the names. Uh, Bikey and... What was her name again? Just one sec. Was it Claire or something? Just give me one moment. God, I can't even remember her name. Carol. That was Carol. And uh, basically, it was it was all right. I mean, um, some of the stories were interesting, but um, the shonen eye elements to it were just laid on a bit too thick. What I mean by that is they kind of launched into it without any kind of build up to it unlike in say Heart of Thomas or uh, Girlfriends you know which actually developed the relationships properly before you know launching into their material as one might say 
this they kind of just started out immediately um so i wasn't that keen on that i would have liked to see the relationship built up a little better the artwork itself it, it's a 90s manga so basically if the artwork actually kind of reminded me of um sailor moon in that they have their really strong jaws the and the um kind of there's a lot of scratchy kind of artwork with detailed hair some of the body you know proportions didn't look right sometimes but uh, overall it was you know a decent looking manga so definitely not one of the worst like but on the overall it was kind of mediocre that's how i'd put it so i'm thinking um next actually just before i even go on to the next um I'll just give you the time. It took me a lot longer than I expected to read those. Uh, for one, it was a bit wordy, and wordy manga takes me a longer to read. Just look at Bakuman, for instance. But anyway, it, so that's um, already four and a half hours in. Now, I did have to stop at one point um, because I was having my lunch. But even with that, it took me longer than I was hoping for to actually read all that. So four and a half hours in, I've only gotten one criteria read. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. But um, the next one is going to be literally a short one. It'll be um, my uh, single Tonkabon uh, category, or basically the one that is like a series that is less than 250 pages, and that is Atom Cat. It is from Osamu Tezuka, published by DMP under their DMP Platinum manga, which is like classic manga. Um, it's supposed to be... It's not certainly not one of Tezuka's better works, apparently. It's very much a child's work. It's basically like a parody, in a sense, of of Astro Boy, because um, basically each chapter opens up with the story from Astro Boy, and then like it, the it, the events reenact, it get reenacted, except that it's a cat who's Astro Boy. So, you know, it's Tezuka, so it'll be interesting at the very least. Um, and it'll be a short read as well. I mean, I think it's like 180 pages, approximately. Um, so yeah, I'll give you my opinion on it. Um, plus, it's it's nice to be able to read something else that's DMP. I literally have um, only one DMP uh, manga read. I was swallowing the earth. So um, I'll report back to you in a while. So... Uh, Hopefully, I'll start making a bit faster progress now. See ya. So, I'm back again. I've uh, just finished reading Atom Cat. Now, uh, my opinion on Atom Cat is that it was... It was fun. You know, very light-hearted. Um, quite simplistic. Obviously, it's children's work. So, of course, it was going to be very simple. Still don't. The original um, Astro Boy, which this is a, technically a remake of, was also aimed at children, and uh, it was still managed to deal with some fairly major themes. Um, you know, racism, you know, hatred, uh, self-sacrifice, etc, etc. Whereas Atom Cat is very much more, you know, it isn't anywhere near as deep as Astro Boy is. Um, it's... I don't even... It, like, basically, each chapter is like a self-contained story. About 30 pages, approximately. There... I mean, most of them had, like, an excerpt from Astro Boy at the beginning. Some of them didn't, but uh, most of them did. Um, but it wasn't so much a remake of that story as it was kind of just... Kind of giving it a plot point, I guess. Like, one of the plot points for one of the stories was, like, you know, Astro Boy didn't know who his parents were. And he was wondering, did he have parents? And, of course, Atom Cat, which I have yet to actually, you know, say how he became Atom Cat. Basically, these aliens came along. They had accidentally killed the cat. And they were examining the boy's um, memories to see how to rebuild him. And the boy absolutely loved Astro Boy. So they rebuilt the cat in the form of Astro Boy. Um, and, you know, it progresses on there. Anyway, the plot point... So, basically, the Adam Cat was wondering um, who his parents were. And it, it progresses from there. So, basically, just taking a plot point from one of those and just progressing from there on. So, and the artwork itself, despite being drawn up in, like, the 80s, 
uh, is the very simple, you know, kind of 1950s, 1960s kind of artwork. A little more detailed than that, of course, probably because of all the experience Tezuka's gotten up to that point, but it is quite simplistic. Overall, it's not a bad read, but definitely not something that is you know, uh, representative of the quality of most Tezuka works. Definitely worth getting, simply because it is a Tezuka and it's to do with Astro Boy, but um, it's definitely one of the lesser works I've read from him. So, um, that's that. I'm just going to put it over um, with my DMPs. Um, from there on, I don't really know which one to go with next. I, If I'm correct, I think the rest of my... Um, categories are all being filled up with um, you know rereads I think uh, that's just the way that most of it's come out at uh, let me just run down here just make sure that there is no new content I should say uh, let me see favorite manga um, let me see manga I've noted in reading I've read that already manga start before 1990 uh, maybe Yuri Tezuka one volume Tonkovan series, which I've just read there, and no, yeah, so yeah, I think everything else is a reread. I hope that isn't uh, too bad that I'm rereading stuff, uh, but which you know, kind of new stuff in general, I like to take my time reading it. So, and plus, because of the schedule that I have with help. Okay, I'll check that in a sec. Uh, anyway, point is, um, <laughs> I, I, but considering my schedule, I don't generally get to reread manga. So my, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, it would be nice just to sit back, reread some of the manga that I've read in the past, and give you my opinions on them, see if they've changed at all. Um, because you know, in comparison to like a movie which it's relatively easy to re-watch the movie, but manga it isn't as easy that I found to reread it because the amount of time for manga is overall a lot more it's more time consuming. So I just thought I would you know reread some stuff. So let's take a look at um how my next option could be. Let me see your favorite manga. Um, a manga started before 1990. I'm thinking I should go with the OEL. I'm gonna pick an OEL. I'm hoping to see people maybe pick Manhua or Manhua. Uh, but um, I there is a OEL that I've been meaning to reread, and simply because when I read it in the past, I didn't actually um, I didn't kind of take my time and appreciate the subtleties of it, which. Um, I do remember it. I remember it had um, a lot of subtleties. It's like some books fell over here. Um, which was, um, you know, I'm a big fan of Scott Pilgrim. I'm a huge fan. And for a while I was considering rereading uh, Scott Pilgrim for um, the this category. But I've already read it twice and I've seen the movie a lot of times. So I was thinking, you know, that isn't particularly original. Plus, I think I heard of one of my friends, the. Uh, female who lent me um, fake for the, uh, you know, whatever. It, um, she, I think, is going to be reading some Scott Pilgrim, so I didn't really want to cross over that kind of boundary. So I was thinking, why not reread Lost at Sea? This is actually Brian Lee O'Malley's first work. Um, he um, made this before Scott Pilgrim, and it's actually... I remember being surprised at the time, it's stylistically very different to... Um, to Scott Pilgrim. Actually, when I was re reading the Solanen, um, which I think I've just uploaded a review today, um, it, it actually reminded me a bit of it because it's like the whole kind of, um, it's like I think she's going along um, on a road trip, she's kind of considering how her life is developing, etc, etc. And if you have any doubt that it's um, a manga, or an o OEL, just consider the fact it's a, I think it's the same size as a Viz signature, it's approximately the same size, and it has the black and white uh, kind of artwork here. Basically, I count it as an OEL, you know. And Brian Lee O'Malley has said that he's been, you know, enormously influenced by manga. So I think it is, um, you know, worth you know reading in the OEL category. So I'll just read this and I'll report back to you my opinions. 
So um, I think I forgot to show you the time last time. Uh, it's six hours and forty-four. I'm not really sure if you can see that. Can you see that? I think you can. Six hours forty-four minutes have passed, approximately. Yeah. So I've just finished Lost at Sea. Um, it's um, how does the one even begin to describe this? The lead character in this, Riley, the girl you see on the cover there, she is such a messed up character. Um, basically, the whole story is like a narration thing. She's on a road trip with um, some f former students of hers that she graduated with. And she, she's going along the road, she's, you know, stuff is happening on her road trip. And as stuff is happening, she's kind of thinking back in her life, you know, how her childhood was, how her relationships was with others, etc, etc. And she, she, like, basically comes up with this idea that she has no soul, that at some point she lost her soul, that she didn't, that she wasn't born without a soul, that at some point in her life she lost a soul, and that's why she's such a horrible person. And it's really, really messed up in her mind. Which makes it very interesting. Um, if I had a particular criticism of this, it seemed that at this point, <laughs> Brian Lee O'Malley doesn't seem to actually realize that he's drawing a like a graphic novel. He seems to think that he's drawing a book. There's so much text in this. Um, like occasionally, there's like um, some scenes. I just look at the amount of text on these pages. It's just absolutely stuffed. Um, occasionally there's some picture where there's like very little text. Um, can't, let me just see if I can find... Kind of like this here, where she's just typing stuff, but um, overall, like it's just absolutely filled to the brim with, which, um, you know, her dialogue and her thoughts. And he just doesn't seem to realize that he's drawing, and that's something that he really kind of nails down in Scott Pilgrim where he uses the, you know, the art aspect of it, you know, and the paneling and everything to much greater effect. Um, so overall, Lost at Sea is very, very um, interesting and it's worth getting particularly if you're into Scott Pilgrim, but it's also worth getting just as a, um, just as, as a graphic novel piece. But it is flawed, I believe. The artwork itself it also has this appeal, even though it's very simplistic. Um, I think I've shown you the artwork before, but you know, relatively simple drawings. But it's got this, you know, appeal to it. You know, it's quite charming. And that's all I have to say on it. It's um, definitely, uh, I would say, more adult than uh, Scott Holgram. That's the other thing to point out. There is a lot of language in this. Like the characters are just cursing like a mile a minute. No sexual situations, or well, like there are some sexual ones, but they're more implied. Um, all that jazz. So, yeah, I enjoyed reading this again. Uh, I think I enjoyed reading it the first time, if I'm correct, but I do remember being kind of bummed out at how different it was to Scott Pilgrim. Um, yeah, all that jazz. So, I'm thinking that uh, the next category I'll read next will be that one. Um, you know, a manga before that was started before 1990. Now, I have a lot of, well, I wouldn't say I have a lot, lot of manga that was, you know, started before 1990, but um, I do probably have more than most manga fans. Um, so, I have a wide variety to pick from. But f what I'm in the mood for right now is um, rereading. Um, the first omnibus of Lone Wolf and Cub. Basically, I think I'll be starting the second omnibus of Lone Wolf and Cub soon. And for some reason, I don't know, it's kind of eating away at the back of my mind. I just feel like I've read, I, I, like I read Lone Wolf and Cub first omnibus, but I missed some stuff. I don't know why, but I just have this niggling at the back of my mind that there's something that I didn't pick up on, like some stuff that I didn't pick up on. So I'm thinking I'll do that next. Um, I, is that the first one that I'll be reading that I've already done a review on? I'm just trying to figure out. I think, yeah, I think it is. The f so basically, 
I just want to check how much stuff I've read up at, at this point. I'm sorry if this is coming off as boring. Um, just doing it as I go along. Plus I'm getting more and more tired. I haven't been sleeping well as of late, so maybe doing a 24 hour manga marathon might not have been the best choice to do at this point. Anyway, yeah, so, so far I've done a manga you have no interest in reading. I've done a, um, a one volume Tonkoban series and I've done an OEL. Is that is Just three. So the ones I haven't done yet is my favourite manga. A manga started before 1990, Tezuka. Or yeah, yeah we, yeah. So I'm thinking that I'll probably go with the Lone Wolf and Cup next, just because that's what I'm in the mood for. And I know I've reviewed it, and it's probably not going to be much different, um, much of a different opinion to that review that I did before. Um, but I'm just in the mood for reading it. If I'm in the mood for reading it, I should just read it. You know, that's what I think. So I'll uh, get back in a while. I'm, it's a big book and I'll probably have dinner sometime during it, in which case I'll have to stop reading, of course. You know, I don't think it would be a good idea to eat and read at the same time. So yeah, yeah, um, I'll get back to you when it's done. And if I actually do spot something that I missed before, like some interesting little pieces of information that I didn't pick up on before, then I'll mention it, you know. Because that's what I'll do. So I'll see you in a while. So now I'm back from reading the um, first omnibus of uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, I enjoyed it more this time, knowing that the uh, stories were more individual, that there was only kind of. Um, that maybe one or two of them dealt with the background of the character, the lead character. And that. Um, the majority of them were kind of standalone stories, so having expected that, I enjoyed it more the second time. Still, though, I still do have the issue though with the um, with the panels that stretch across the page. It just makes it a bit awkward reading it because you're working your way down one page and then you realize, oh wait, you got to read to the top of the next page before moving on to the next part in the middle of the next of the two pages. Etc. Etc. But still highly recommend it, and I will probably be reading uh, Lone Wolf and Cub very soon. Uh, season t uh, episode, season episode, Omnibus Two. Soon, um, it is very good. Um, how long has it been now? Uh, I'm not sure. Again, I can't actually tell. Eleven hours forty minutes have passed so far. That's. What time is it now, actually? Let me just check the clock. That is almost 11, which actually makes sense because I started um, about 11 in the morning. So, with the reading of Lone Wolf and Cub, I believe there are three categories left to cover. Um, I'm thinking the next one will be my uh, Yaoi or Shun and I. I know I already did a Yaoi or Shun and I, but that was for the... Um, that was for the uh, manga I have no interest in reading. Uh, not that I have no interest in reading any of them. Um, there was, it was um, this is ironic now. Uh, well, it's not so much ironic as annoying. Basically, basically, um, I you know didn't have too much time to set myself up for you know selecting my manga to read. Um, so while you know I was able to get some stuff like borrow some stuff off of a friend, um, you know I wasn't able to order in brand new stuff. But even if I did, I wouldn't have been able to get. Um, was it? I think it was. It was in my M. I think I buy my M. If you're not aware of it, it's a um, manga and anime magazine released in the UK, owned by the same company that makes the um, MCM Expo. So that's cool. Um, but. They've just reviewed, they reviewed manga as well as anime, um, and they just reviewed a yaoi manga called Crimson Spell, which I think would have been fairly awesome to do for this, because it sounds very good with maybe like the actual yaoi bit of it sounding a bit, I don't know, iffy, but the rest of it sounds awesome, and looks very good, and all that, but it was only just released, I only found it about just, you know, literally days ago, so... Of course, I wasn't able to get my hands on it, and uh, I was it. I don't actually have that much shonen. I I know I have no yaoi, um, 
So uh, for a while I was considering doing Heart of Thomas again, but you know I only read that just recently and I've already reviewed it. However, there is another series. I read it before Heart of Thomas, but um, I did not review it online, considering um, it was actually relatively short. Um, and that is the complete uh, legal drug. That is incomplete as well, because I think this is done by Clamp. Uh, if you can see the artwork, it looks very Clamp. And um, they're continuing on this series after it was cancelled. I can't recall why it was cancelled. Was it cancelled in the magazine or was it because the magazine stopped? I don't know. But for, anyway, for whatever reason, Legal Drug was stopped. It is a, sh a Shonen Ai shoujo. Um, but Clamp have just recently brought back Legal Drug as Drug and Drop, a Senin. Um, now, I don't know. It probably does still contain that, you know, Shonen Ai, Yaoi element, whatever. Um, so, but, you know, um, my point is, um, hopefully Dark Horse will re start releasing it at some point. I don't know. They usually get their hands on to clamp stuff. Point of Illegal Drug, though, was before. I wasn't actually that keen on it. Act was it? My original opinion, I doubt it'll change over this uh, reading, but, you know, I can ex... I, I, I might change, I don't know. Basically, I wasn't that keen on the first volume, I thought the second volume was actually pretty good, and the third volume was... it just laid to Sean and I way too heavy, you know, it was very unsubtle, and it wasn't handled that well, in my opinion. But I'll give it another go, um, you know, just see if my opinion has changed. That and it's probably better than reading, you know, Heart of Thomas again because um, I did have already reviewed that, whereas I haven't really reviewed Little Drug. So um, yeah, I'll get back to you when I've read that. That's three volumes now, so like to read. So I don't know how long that'll take me, uh, but I'll see you again in a bit. I'm back. Um, I've just read uh, Little Drug. And I actually enjoyed the first volume a lot more than I did the first time around. I don't know what it was first time around. Maybe I was just too tired or too out of it. I don't know. But I enjoyed it a lot more this time around. I enjoyed the second volume about the same. And then the third volume, the quality just majorly dipped in my opinion. Basically, this series is um, about... Uh, I'm getting tired, so just give me one sec to think. Um... It's about a guy called, um, God, I can't even remember his name. I'm so tired. Kudo, yeah. Um, he's found in the street. He's taken up back to a store where he must work for his um, rent. And he's able to, um, yeah, just live there. And uh, he, he has to deal with, like, these kind of supernatural cases where he uses his power to, like, read stuff that he can touch, like the, he can get the memories from inanimate objects and all that. And uh, the first two volumes are actually pretty good, um, even if, you know, there's some shonen eye in there. The third volume, though, it, it kind of drags to a halt. There's no progression on his storylines. It's just not that good overall, the third volume, so that is disappointing. That and the fact that since there's only those three volumes and it's intended to be a lot longer than that, it, um, there's a lot of like cut off plot points. Still, though, it was pretty good, you know, I enjoyed reading it again. So, that's the fifth category, I believe. I think I have only two categories left to do. Um, I'll put these back now, um, just before I even go into the next, um, the next categories. I just want to explain something. Um, basically, when I made that uh, top 10 manga list, um, what was it? a lot of them are kind of like looking back on the manga and sometimes you can look back on with rose tinted glasses. So basically the next two categories are me going back and kind of checking to see if they're as good as I remember them to be. Um, the first one will be my Osamu Tezuka category.
Ayako. Now, Ayako is my third favorite manga of all time, but I must admit, I read it at a time when my standards for manga were lower. So I am wondering, are they, is it as good as I say it is? Or is it just a case where, you know, I was so impressed with it at the time that I just can't think of anything really bad about it? I don't know. I'll have to read it and try it out again. I am getting very tired right now, I will just say it's approximately 20 past 1 in the morning now. I've been at this for 14 hours at this point. So I am getting very tired. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just read Ayako and then get back to you. So, yeah, I'll see you then. So I fin finally finished reading Ayako. Um, it took me longer than I expected. Um, basically, I think it's because I'm really tired and also I'd forgotten this. There was a lot more um, narration in it than I remember. Just kind of Ayako's story is kind of mixed in with um, real events happening in Japan. So there's all this narration going on. Lots of text and all that jazz and it kind of lengthened to read. Still it's as awesome as I remember it. It um, definitely uh, is a fantastic read and I would highly recommend anyone get it. Basically my original viewpoint stands. Uh, and if my voice is slurring <laughs> because I'm so tired. At this point 19 hours and 23 minutes have passed since I started. So my brain is just completely... <laughs> it feels too large for my skull. So I'll just put this back. So basically that's the six of the seven criteria filled out, I think. Let me just uh, quickly run through it. I know you guys must be a um, fairly short time to each to each, but you have to remember Many many hours are being are like being different. So I just want to check. So I have a ma yeah. I've read the manga. I've no interest in. I read the manga start before 1990. I've read the Yari. I read the Tezuka. I've read the one volume talk about. I've read the OEL. So basically, all that's left is my favorite manga. So basically, I'm thinking there's about four and a half hours left uh, before. Um, is it four and a half? Yeah, it is four and a half hours left approximately before the end of the marathon and I'm thinking what better way to end it with than a manga series that I haven't read since um god at least three years ago if not more um I've seen the anime version of it relatively recently but um uh, basically, I, want, I haven't read the manga version of it for ages. So I'm, what I'm basically going to do is, I was intending to at the very least read the first arc of it. Um, but I'm not sure if I'll get up to that bit in time. I'll just read as much as I can within the next four and a half hours or whatever. But that is Death Note. I haven't read this forever. So I'm looking forward to reading it again. Now I, um, I'll just basically read as much as I can and then stop. That's my plan for the moment. So, if you want to know the time, it's about half six, which I think, yeah, four and a half hours is correct. Uh, brings me up to about eleven. So, um, I don't think there's really any um thing else I can say right now. Basically, I'll uh, get back um, once I've read some death notes, I'll tell you how many volumes I've read, I'll just kind of run through what I've, uh, what series for what category and I'll just finish up there, okay? So I'm back, um, basically I've, this is all I've managed to get read, it was um, just the first two volumes of death notes. I probably should have been able to read more but um, Several reasons for that. One, I am so wrecked right now. Two is that it's very wordy, you know, Death Note. Um, th 
tree that there was, you know, I had, I, I got breakfast and four would be that it's actually about like, it's 23 hours and like 18 minutes or something like that. So it's not quite 24 hours, but at this point I'm just not really capable of reading more. And plus it would take anything that I would read at this point would take me over the 24 hours, which, you know, I don't think, um, would be best so uh, yeah so basically my opinions on Death Note is is still so awesome I had such a big grin on my face as I was reading it all just nostalgia just remembering how all the awesome schemes of light and the play between him and L and all the characters and everything and the artwork is fantastic as well like it's amazing that it's a weekly um, it was a weekly chapter thing because it looks very very good Anyway, that note for the win. Um, okay, so basically, at this point, I just wanna just make sure that it's clear which manga I did for which categories. Um, I'm fairly sure at this point that I did um, that I, you know, mentioned which categories they were fulfilling. But at this point, it's been so long. I just wanna make sure. So I'll give them in the order that. I put down on this list here. So my favorite manga, that was the Death Note. A manga that you have no interest in reading, that was... Uh, well, actually, I'll give the numbers as well, so two volumes of Death Note. A manga I have no interest in reading, that's three volumes of Fake. A manga started before 1990, that was the first omnibus of Lone Wolf and Cub. A uh, Yaoi, or, um, or Shonen Ai, that would be the complete uh, legal drug. Tezuka, that would be all of um, Ayako. Uh, one Tonkoban series, or basically like a whole series under 250 pages. That would be um, Atom Cat. And an OEL Manhua or Manhua. That would be um, Brian Lee O'Malley's Lost at Sea. So I've read all that and it's I got it all done within 24 hours. And I'm so tired right now. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. Um, if assuming that no one's you know uploaded anything before I upload this this will be the first 24 hour manga marathon video on YouTube which I'm very proud of um, hopefully there will be more participants you know participating and uh, I'm hoping to see them one up the quality of my one as I said before I didn't have as much variety in manga as I probably would have liked simply because of the fact that I didn't have as much time to prepare for it as I was kind of expecting. So um, yeah, I hope you guys still enjoyed it. You know, I think it turned out pretty well. I thought it would turn out pretty entertaining. A decent variety of manga. And uh, that's it, I guess. So um, this has been Immortalium's Events. Uh, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and don't forget to message me for uh, if you want to submit your 24-hour manga marathon video. So uh, good luck those participating and for those not participating but um, enjoying the videos that will be put out through this event. Enjoy.